This video is going to show you how to achieve some of the points or most of the points from a typical on-screen test for Java. Um, as you'll see from this screen, I've already opened up the WJC icebreaker task um, on this window here, which is the first task on the example um, exam paper, and you can see all the items there. Um, it says populate the world with um, a ship and some icebergs, so that's what I'm doing now. And these haven't got any code in them at the minute, apart from the code that is um, already in there. And now we have to edit the iceberg so that they move randomly. So I'm going to open the editor, and this is the code that you get given. So right at the top for random, I'm importing uh, a utility, a Java utility called random. So I'm just type that right at the very top. So if you're asked to do something with random movement, then that's what you'll need to do. And now in the act method, I now need to create a new uh, random number using that library that I've just imported. So random, making a ran, random number called random equal to a new random number, uh, an integer um, called direction will equal my new random number. And you'll see why shortly, because we have to set the direction via a number. And you can see that from the lines above that say private final static int east equals north, west one, north two, and south three. And I'm setting the direction to that number and then moving. So click compile and then close that one. So you can check that now by um, putting an iceberg in there. And then click run. And if it moves on its own, then that's moving randomly, which is all fine. Next one is edit the code to make the ship move in the direction of the arrow keys. Now, because this is a grid, um, you can see that where it says act, it's empty. But for the grid moving in the iceberg, I can see which way they're going to move in the grid. So I can copy and paste the code from the iceberg across to the ship because they're the directions now obviously you have to bear in mind that this time we need to press a key so I'm going to have to edit the code saying if green foot dot is key down and then for each individual key um, replace the code and you'll see this as I'm typing it now so there's down and don't forget to align it and put your curly brackets in and bring that back and tab it in And I'm going to do this for each one. Just delete that piece of code there. And we do the same thing for each case. So for each direction I can move in, I'm going to put the code and pressing the up, down, left, and right arrow keys based on. The direction so you've got to make sure you get these in the right way so once it's south uh, for down east for right north for up and west for left so don't learn these blindly without looking at which way north south east and west are because when you press the keys they'll go in the wrong direction copy that code make it quicker i suppose if you want to and then just you don't need the um, case bit there from the iceberg class. You can just paste that in. But because we're working with a grid, this is why it's using the x and y coordinates. Um, similarly to when we looked at this before, as a, or sorry, as opposed to when we looked at this before with the uh, lobster class that didn't have a grid, so we were just moving across the whole world. This one's got a grid, so we're moving by coordinates. So depending on what you get in your on-screen yeah. test yeah. will depend on which way you have to solve it. But it's much easier if you uh, if you know the code for both. So as long as you know the key, the code for moving, um, for pressing and keys up and down, then you can just change the code in there. But this would be a good start. So there's the code for moving. And we compile it, and we just check. Oh, we need a semicolon there. So just compile it. And close those 
and then we can add a ship and just check that when I run it, it's going to move when I press my arrow key. If it doesn't seem to move, just move your speed up a little bit. So up, down, a bit too quick. Up, left, down, right. Yeah, that's working fine. Cool. So we'll reset all that and look at the next one. So edit the ship so that it breaks an iceberg when they collide and it removes the iceberg from the world. So to do this one we have to edit the ship's code and within that same method uh, we're going to put actor, in, actor iceberg and then iceberg equals get object at offset zero zero so is, it, is there an iceberg uh, from the iceberg class at the point I'm at in the world. And if the iceberg does not equal null, so it's not not empty, then I'm going to put world ocean, and that's the world, what the name, what the world's named on the top right. Um, get world first, because I need to get an object out of the world and then ocean dot remove object iceberg so now if there's an object at the same position that I'm at in the world as I move around this grid as soon as I encounter an object that is an iceberg it's going to remove it from the world and this works for lots of things this worked for the um, worm for the for the crab it worked for the wombat for the leaf so here's the is me moving around oh and as soon as I hit the iceberg it disappears, so that works just fine. So let's reset and look at the next one. Add a sound which will play every time the ship collides with an iceberg. Well, for this, you'll need to look into the folder that you've got given and look in the sounds folder to see what the file's called. And in this one, it's called pop.wav. So we need to know what that's called so we can put it in our code. And right underneath, I'm going to put greenfoot.wav play sound and then in brackets and in quote pop.wav so as soon as it removes the iceberg it's then going to play that popping sound compile it again and I suppose we can test that by putting a new iceberg in and popping a ship in and then we'll run it and then pop it's going to play the pop sound so we'll reset again Finally, add a counter and edit the ship's code so that the counter displays how many icebergs have been broken or removed from the world. So this is like a score at the top left. Now you've already got a counter class in there, so it's worth having a look at what's in there. Um, we've got a counter method and we've got a bump count method. So it's worth knowing that they exist so we know what we're working with. Now I've got my ocean for my world because this the world is where I want to put the counter. So we don't want to mess about with the ship or anything because we want to put the counter in the world. So I'm just going to make a new private variable called uh, instance of a counter called the counter. So an instance of the counter called the counter, and we'll be able to reference that in a in a short while. And then within the ocean class, the counter equals new oh, we need a space there new counter got a bit of semicolon every line there we go and then add the counter add object the counter so close brackets so that's added a counter to the world or will and it's added at zero, 00, so far top left. And then I need another method in my ocean class, which you'll have to create yourself. So public counter. And all that's going to do, get counter, is going to return the value because we need to display it onto the screen. So return the variable, the counter. And that's all that method, method needs to include. So you can compile that one and then 
anything from over there. So now you can see on the top left we've got a counter, and in the ship class, if I hit an iceberg, I need to be able to use the counter and make sure it changes by one. So just pop this code in. Ocean, ocean. It's going to get the world counter counter equal ocean dot get counter. So that's using the method that I put at the bottom. And then the counter dot bump count. Bump count was a method in the counter that takes a variable of an integer um, of one. So every time, if I put a 10 in there, every time I hit an iceberg, it would add 10 onto the score. I'm only putting a 1 in there. So every time I hit an iceberg, and you can see there, bump count, int amount. So I'm whatever's in this bracket on the left-hand side in the hit iceberg method down there, whatever number is in there is going to add to the counter. So I put a 1. So every time I hit an iceberg, it's going to increment that value by 1. And then we need to call that method from within the uh, by using hit iceberg open close bracket semicolon. So we'll test it now. There's the counter on the top left. We're going to add some icebergs. That's another one. And I'm going to add a ship. And then we'll run it and see how we get on. Run. So move the ship. Pop, there's one gone. And the counter's moved up one and two. And three. So you can see the counter on top left has hit three. We had a pop for each one. That is it all done. So finally, you just need to look across and save your completed work as final icebreaker. So scenario and save as. Just type in a new folder and call it Final Icebreaker or whatever you're told to save it as. Create and save. And that is your on-screen test for Java done.